So if you watch my channel, you may know that I'm quite the supporter of our local Habitat for Humanity Restore. And, well, recently they got in a very nice donation of a bunch of solar inverters and 10 kilowatt battery packs. And they asked me to test the unit and to make a video so that anybody who wishes to buy one of these sets of equipment knows what they are. So that's what this video is all about. So what's in the package from the ReStore? Well, you get a nice big solar inverter, a gigantic battery, a base to mount the inverter on, and a shelf to mount that base on, some additional mounting hardware, three current protection devices for each of the solar panel strings, and a remote control unit that you can use to control the inverter from the comfort of inside your home. The specs are available online, but very briefly, the inverter will handle three strings of solar panels, each providing two and a half kilowatts for a total solar input of seven and a half kilowatts, either charging the battery or pumping to the grid or providing power to a local 120 volt outlet. And the battery is rated at almost 10 kilowatt hours with a usable capacity of about seven and a half. I did some testing on it and with rapid charging and discharging, I got about six kilowatt hours of storage. And that's probably what you would expect. So what can this thing do? Well, it's actually quite versatile. It can accept power from the panels and use them to charge the battery or pump that power to the grid or some combination of both. It can accept power from the grid and use that to charge the battery. And if the grid goes away, it can provide power from both the solar panels and the battery on a 120 volt, two kilowatt receptacle that you can attach to the unit. And exactly how it manages those multiple operations really depends on how you configure it using the remote control panel. And the details for all of that are on the manuals, which should be available online. So what's in the inverter? Well, normally this front panel would be screwed on, but I've conveniently removed the screws. So let's remove the panel. And then there normally is this plastic cover, which also has a bunch of screws, which can be removed. And if we do that, we can now see exactly what's inside the controller. So what do we have? Well, up here is the maximum power point solar controller portion of the box. On the top of the unit here, we have the three solar maximum power point controllers. One here, one here, and one down here. And they're all connected together with these buses, which are at a 400 volt DC potential. So that's why this thing should never be left open when it's operating, because that's quite a dangerous voltage if you were to get your fingers on it. And over here, it looks like we have four very hefty inductors that are probably used to filter the incoming and outgoing AC power. On the lower half of the unit, we have what looks like the control circuit board with probably some sort of embedded microprocessor, which really runs the show and has these wires connecting to the various control and sensor inputs. It has a dip switch over here, which can be used for hardware configuration. And there's some indication what the settings are in the manual. And there's also a series of LEDs here that give status, although I don't believe what exactly they mean is explained anywhere. Below the controller board is a larger circuit board, which appears to be the inverter to provide AC power back to the grid if you're feeding to the grid or to provide AC power to your local 120 volt load in a backup configuration when the grid goes down. And it's actually a very good 
sine wave inverter. If we look at the signal on the scope, it's essentially a perfect sine wave. And, well, it's actually better than the sine wave that I normally get from the power company. Down here, looks like there are a bunch of relays and also another couple of big toroids doing some more filtering of the AC power connections. And then over here, we have the interconnect section. The upper section over here are for all the DC connects. Over here is the 86 volt battery connection. And there are three pairs of connections, one for each of the solar panel strings. And it's quite nicely done because no screws. You have these little latches, put the cable in, close it, and press it down, and you're done. Up here are the connectors for the three wires going to the remote control, the current transformers, and the battery. Down here, we have the current transformers that are supplied with the system, and they clip around the L1 and L2 grid connections. Normally they would go on the grid wires going into your circuit breaker panel, but they work equally well when connected directly to the incoming lines, to the inverter, at least for very simple operations where you're not trying to sell things back to the grid to any extent. As I discovered, you have to get these two current transformers on the correct L1 and L2 lines, and also in the correct orientation. If you have them flipped or on the opposite lines that they're intended for, the inverter senses it, and effectively they report com power coming in when it should be going out and vice versa. And then under certain circumstances, the thing shuts down, such as when you're trying to uh, charge the batteries. And, well, you get a fault message on the remote control. So make sure you, you get these things right in terms of their orientation. What else do we have? Down back here, we have the grid connection, live, neutral, and live. And then on this side of it, we have a live and neutral for the 20 amp output connection, 120 volts, 20 amp output, which can be used as a giant battery backup unit because the inverter connects to it when the grid goes down. If we look at the thing as a whole, well, it is very nicely built. Wires are routed quite neatly. There is filtering toroids on the wires going to the solar panels, as well as on the control wires over here. And, of course, these great big filters, which I think are probably connected to the AC lines. And, well, all in all, it doesn't look like any expense was spared um, in terms of building this thing properly. There are a few things worth mentioning after I did spend about a week playing with and testing the unit. The first thing is it requires a 240 volt connection to the grid, and that's 240 volts with a neutral. And it needs that not only to charge the batteries or sell power back to the grid, but also simply to get the unit operating. In other words, to start it. It won't start simply with a charged battery and or solar panels. If you want to use it for off-grid applications, you need to find some way of starting it with 240 volts, such as from a generator. And indeed, I've done that with my small 2 kilowatt Yamaha. Now, it is worth pointing out that it does need fairly good quality AC, so you do need pretty good quality AC coming from the generator if you want to use it that way. If you want to use it with solar panels, as most of you probably do, it does need a minimum of 80 volts DC input, and that means you essentially need four 24 volt DC panels in series on a single string going into the inverter for that to work. I did discover that no part of the DC circuit going to the solar panels can be grounded anywhere, or at least anywhere outside of the internals of the inverter. And in case you're wondering, I was able to replace the capacitor and fix the unit after that little misadventure. To their credit, 
it does warn you of not connecting the DC circuits to ground in the manual, but I didn't see that. If you're out in the country like I am, you might be wondering whether the inverter can power a well pump, and I'm happy to report that it worked very nicely with my half horsepower pump. I did need to use a 120 to 240 volt transformer to power the pump because like most pumps it runs off 240 volts and the inverter spits out 120. It is worth noting that most well pumps draw an enormous amount of current when they start up and that might be a problem so the compatibility between your pump and this inverter is probably something that has to be determined experimentally. The remote control allows you to configure the unit for numerous operational settings including when it sells power to the grid or extracts power from the grid. Depending on your arrangements with the power company, you need to be very careful on how you set those things up, and in particular, make sure the unit does not send power to the grid if you're not set up with the power company to allow that. It's also worth pointing out that the unit does not come with any power cables, so you have to provide those yourself, and they should comply with all local electrical codes or other regulations, as should your entire installation. So what is the ReStore asking for this nice kit? Well, it's only 500 bucks, and that's 500 bucks Canadian, so for you people down south, it's even less in American dollars, probably more like 400 or something like that. What a deal! And of course, the best thing is, it all goes to a very good cause. If you're not in the Ottawa area and would like one of these units, I think if you were to contact the ReStore, they'd probably be happy to help lift it onto the back of a truck if you went ahead and arranged shipping and hired a courier to show up at their loading dock. Well, that brings this video to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.